Hello! Welcome to GMAT Tuesdays! I got you guys a present! You wanna see what it is? <laughs> back solving! <laughs> Today we're gonna to talk about back solving, which is a great math strategy. Um, let's get this out of the way. Um, and so this is one way to approach problems. And it helps you to avoid doing a lot of algebraic, um, uh, algebraic problems and algebraic solving. So the key points to back solving are you need to make sure you have all answers are numbers. You need to make sure, oh, and this is an alternative to algebra, which I just said. And uh, start with C. C is the best answer to start with because when you have um, answer choices that are listed on the GMAT, it's going to be from smallest to largest. And so if you start with C and you use C, then if it doesn't work, you know, oh, if it's too big, then you can eliminate C, D, and E and start with B or A. And if you know if it's too small, then you can eliminate C, B, and A, and then you have two answer choices to work with. So um, it's the most efficient way to approach things. But there is a caveat. This is the GMAT. It's not always straightforward. Um, also, don't just be committed to C. Sometimes it's easier to start somewhere else. So for example, if these were your answer choices here, um, you can see one, they're all really close together. So I can't really estimate. Um, and two, having to like deal with these very tough numbers is gonna be, it's gonna be tough, it's gonna be hard. Um, but I can see B is a round number. It's nice, it's 15,000, that's very easy to deal with. So in this case, I would actually start with B just because you know, all these other answer choices are gonna take me a lot more time. Um, so, start with C, but start with your easiest answer choice, um, ultimately. Okay, let's take a look at what back solving really is. And so, um, with back solving, you start with your answer choices, plug them into your algebra, and see if it gives you the answer that you're looking for. If it's not, then you move on. And so, in this case, we have a question, what is the smallest positive integer x for which x cubed plus 5x has a value more than 80? And so what this is saying is what number for x gives us x cubed plus 5x, and that is greater than 80. And so, instead of trying to like solve this algebraic equation, it's crazy town, um, why not just use some of these numbers, plug them in, and just see what we end up with? And so, as I said, let's start with C. So I'll plug in, uh, I'll make 4 cubed plus 5 times 4. So 4 cubed is 64. And then 5 times 4 is 20. And that gives me 84. So I know now that 4 is uh, an integer that does give me a number greater than 80 when I plug it in. So I know it's not going to be any of these, it might be C, but I want to check and make sure that it's not 3. Maybe 3 gets me even closer um, to 80, and so that would be the smallest integer to choose. So let's just double check. Um, so we'll do 3 cubed plus 5 times 3. So 3 cubed is, or 3 squared is 9, times 3 is 27 plus 15, that gives me 42. Okay, so that's not even close to 80. So then I know B is not the right answer, and I will choose C. That's it. So um, remember, back solving, if you have numbers in the answer choices and you have algebra in front of you, think about plugging in numbers uh, to arrive at an answer instead of churning and burning through um, an algebra equation. Um, this can be a really efficient way to get through some of the questions on the GMAT. All right, uh, did you like your present? I hope so. <laughs> um, that's it for me today. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section below. As always, if you would like to see a certain type of video, let us know and we'll be happy to make it. Um, be excellent to the universe and I'll see you next week.